Hi everybody, this is Todd B. And I'm Brett Moses. And this is another pro and con. So Brett, I don't know how you're really going to beat up on this guy. Really? For real? <laughs> he's a really nice person and he's doing some cool stuff. Yes. He definitely is doing some good stuff and I can, I can see some benefit from that. Okay. Um, you got to laugh when you see a guy who is... Uh, you know, long hair, ponytail, talking oh, about the Look at this. latent image. <laughs> now, wait a minute. <laughs> His looks? I mean, well, that's sustainable? No, it's just he's talking about the latent image of, oh, okay. of the sustainable people being the hippie, you know. There's a merit to that. There seems to be a, a visage. Is that the right word? Visage? A look? Yes. That people are trying to pr- 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 propagate uh, with the movement. And I think that that sometimes alienates people like yourself. Absolutely. You know, the, the coat and tie wearing guy, straight, probably plays tennis on the weekends. <laughs> <laughs> but that being said, you know, some of his practices such as, you know, buying from the local market and encouraging commerce at the local level as opposed to giving into the big box mentality, which I talk about a lot. I know it comes back to that all the time, but that is really what's going to help people who are in difficult times in this economy is – keeping the dollars close to home and being able to share with the neighbors. Absolutely, and I think there's a lot of merit to that if you're willing to eat within what the local market has. I mean, you might be able to go there and they don't have what you want to eat. Are you going to are you going to eat green beans this month because they have green beans and that's all they got? <laughs> well, that's a, that's true. You do need to be more creative with your recipes perhaps. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, there, there's some merit to that, but there's also if you go and you look at some of the bigger stores, the markets that they have, um, they tout growing or purchasing local local organics. I, I think that there's part of it for the local markets, but there's also part of it for, for the bigger stores that do buy locally. They have fresh, they have fresh vegetables that are grown in farms nearby, so. That is true. Stephanie, you're an entrepreneurial newspaper woman and I'd like to find out how that's sustainable and what you're doing with it. I launched EcoWatch, which publishes EcoWatch Journal. So we just celebrated our fourth birthday. We publish 70,000 copies per issue. We just distribute them in more than 40 counties across the state of Ohio. Uh, Northeast Ohio is our largest distribution area. We just launched um, deeper into Columbus. We now have 125 locations there and plan to move on to Cincinnati in the next several months. And so what do you do that's sustainable in your personal life? About three years ago, I decided, uh, I had already taken a lot of steps toward being sustainable. I decided I need to focus more on my uh, energy use in my home. So I pulled out my electricity bill and I started, you know, really trying to understand how many kilowatts per hour was I using in my home. And I realized that my electricity bill was really informative. It tells you how many kilowatts per hour you used that month. It tells you how many kilowatts per hour you used every month for the entire year. Um, and also it breaks it down per day. So, and they give you a bar chart, so it just was really informative. And I realized, okay, well, what if I were to implement a couple different things in my home? For example, I know a lot of products and appliances run on standby mode. So that means that it's still drawing power from the grid even though you've turned it off. It's on standby. So I bought some power strips, um, somewhere between $10 and $15 power strips. And my TV, instead of plugging it right into the wall, I plug my TV into the power strip, the power strip into the wall. So when I turn my TV off, I turn also the power strip off, and now I know it's not pulling any power from the grid when that's off. Um, Also, when I was sitting at my desk, which I work out of my home, I realized every time I turned my computer on, I was also turning my printer and scanner on, as well as my speakers. And I realized I only used my printer maybe 10 minutes of the whole maybe eight hours that I'd sit in front of my computer. Um, And with today's technology, I rarely use my scanner, however it sat on for the whole time I'm sitting there. So I bought power strips to also help me with um, making it easy on myself so I didn't always bend over, unplug, but had different power strips, different uh, um, computer um, equipment plugged into them. And so then I only turned them on when I needed them. Um, also with my speakers, I listen to music a lot when working, but if I wasn't listening to music, I make sure I use the switch to turn my speakers off as well. Um, so what was so neat is that it was a real measurable goal that I was trying to achieve. 
I was able to then, when my bill came, which normally you dread bills coming, but I got really excited when my electricity bill came so that I could see, did I really lower my usage? And lo and behold, um, three years later, I used to use 765 kilowatts per hour per month. I'm down to 333 kilowatts per hour per month, and I'm saving nearly $60 a month. So um, I realized this is just great. Um, if everyone on my street did this, wow, we would really have a huge impact on lowering the amount of coal being burned to produce electricity in the state of Ohio. And I understand you've uh, gone even beyond that, and you have a company now that uh, is developing alternative energy. Could you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, uh, um, I submitted a business idea to the Civic Innovation Lab at the Cleveland Foundation. I had worked on energy issues for a lot of years and got to really understand the impacts of the burning of coal on our environment. Um, the release of carbon dioxide in the air um, contributing to global warming and climate change. So I decided I needed to do more than just the sustainable practices I was doing in my everyday life. I needed to come up with solutions for us to lower the base load needs for coal in our state. So I launched a business, Expedite Renewable Energy, and it helps, I go business by business, encouraging business to, businesses to invest in wind or solar power, which are much cleaner, um, renewable sources of energy. So um, we help businesses by assessing their electricity usage, and then we strategize a renewable energy project for their company, what's the best project for their particular site, and then we help them through all the grants, tax credits, um, depreciation um, in other areas for them to get help to pay for their project. Um, so it's been really successful. My company helped project manage um, the first uh, Cleveland wind turbine at Pearl Road Auto Parts and Wrecking. It's a 120 kW Vestas wind turbine right at 480 in Pearl Road. And that wind turbine will generate nearly 100% of the electricity needs for the company. And could you do this wind turbine thing at home too? Or? Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of new wind turbines on the market. Um, vertical access wind turbines are typically used in the home. They can mount to a rooftop or, on, um, or they can you know, be on a tower. Um, but they're, much, they're smaller and you, know, you can get 5kW, 10kW for residential use. A really important thing for businesses as well as residents is that they become as energy efficient as possible before investing in renewable energy. Therefore, they can get a smaller system, save tens of thousands of dollars for their overall project cost for their renewable energy project. So Stephanie, where do you think this whole sustainability thing is going to go? I, I have a very positive outlook. I think we're really going to see a major tipping point happen in the next several years where we'll actually have more people working toward a sustainable future than not. And the reason being is due to our continued reliance on um, non-renewable sources of energy. Our prices for everything is going to continue to soar. And I think when people really understand the impacts in, on your, in your pocketbook as well as the bottom line for businesses that we have no choice but to start to rely on renewable cleaner sources of energy and that we also have to stop throwing things away that are recyclable or can be you know sold again a lot of our garbage that we see as garbage really isn't and um, there's value to it so I think as time goes on people are absolutely going to realize that they do need to be conscious of their impact on the earth they do need to be more efficient, and we're going to. Technology is going to help us along the way. There's going to be more affordable wind turbines for um, every type of business and or resident, and we're really going to see that people come together and do their best to to protect the earth as well as human health.